Hello, I'm Eileen McHugh with the BBC News. President Zelensky says the Ukrainian flag is again flying in the strategically important town of Liman in Donetsk a day after Vladimir Putin declared the eastern Ukrainian region would be Russian forever. Mr Zelensky said fighting was still going on there. The Ukrainian flag is already in Liman, Donetsk region. Fighting is still going on there. It's logical for Ukraine and for the enemy. There will be more and more such mismatches. They, by the way, have already started squabbling with each other. They are looking for the culprits, blaming some generals for the failures. The Kremlin says all its troops have pulled out of the town, but Kiev says many Russian fighters were killed or taken prisoner. Burkina Faso's deposed leader has called on his rivals to come to their senses and avoid infighting after a coup on Friday. Paul-Henri Damiba, who took power in military takeover earlier this year, was making his first statement since being overthrown. He denied he had taken refuge at a French military base. France has condemned attacks on its embassy by protesters on Saturday. Aruna Lure is a deputy in Burkina Faso's Transitional Legislative Assembly. He says it's unclear who's in charge. There is a certain tension that exists amongst these military leaders. There is a faction that has decided to act as president and to decide to change things for themselves. And we must first and foremost get out of this crisis. We have a common enemy, which is insecurity, and it's not a time to play political games. President Biden has announced that Venezuela has released seven Americans detained by President Nicolas Maduro's government. The announcement is a further sign of improvement in relations between Washington and Caracas. More from Leonardo Rocha. Among those released are five former executives of Venezuela's US-based oil company, Citgo. They were jailed five years ago after being summoned to a meeting in Caracas where they were charged with terrorism. In exchange for their freedom, Mr. Biden has agreed to release two nephews of Venezuela's first lady who are about to be tried for drug trafficking in New York. For many years, the US has accused Mr. Maduro of leading a left-wing dictatorship, but the Biden administration has recently sent envoys to reopen dialogue with Venezuela. Iran has allowed an Iranian-American man who was detained six years ago to leave the country. Bagheer Namazi, a former UN Children's Agency official, had travelled to the country to campaign for the release of his son, Siamak, who was arrested in 2015. Both were convicted of espionage and sentenced to 10 years' imprisonment. This is the World News from the BBC. Power has been restored in most of the Cuban capital, Havana, following three days of widespread blackouts caused by Hurricane Ian. Cuba was already going through a serious energy crisis when the hurricane hit the west of the island on Tuesday. People in Havana and other cities banged pots and pans for two consecutive nights to protest. Some took to the streets shouting slogans against the communist government. As a clean-up operation after Hurricane Ian gets underway in the southeastern United States, the number of deaths has been rising. The authorities in Lee County, one of the worst affected areas, say at least 35 people have died there. Matthew Keller is a pastor at a local church who has been helping to distribute aid. It's a water crisis here in Lee County and in our region of southwest Florida. We spoke to the governor's office yesterday. The main water main of our county apparently is completely broken. And so they have communicated to us that the number one need in all of our region right now is food and then specifically water. More than 60 people, including members of Iraqi security forces, have reported to being injured during clashes in Baghdad. Medical and security sources say some stone-throwing protesters were hit by rubber bullets and tear gas canisters. The Iraqi military said the protests had been infiltrated by elements using petrol bombs and hunting rifles. The demonstrations were called to mark the third anniversary of anti-government unrest in which hundreds died. The two front-runners in Brazil's highly polarised presidential election have held their final rallies ahead of voting on Sunday. President Jair Bolsonaro gathered thousands of his supporters on a motorbike ride through the streets of Sao Paulo. A short distance away, the left-wing former leader, Luis Inácio Lula da Silva, took part in a march that ended in the heart of the city's financial district. Lula is leading all opinion polls by a wide margin. BBC News.